Welcome, ghouls and goblins, to a special Halloween edition of Colorado Crime Podcast. I'm Amanda, and today we're digging up some of Colorado's darkest secrets. And I am Corey. We've got our flashlights ready, and we're creeping through the haunted halls of Colorado's most notorious asylum, Ridge Home in Arvada. Beware, because this episode might just send a chill down your spine. That's right. It's Halloween, so grab your candy, light your jack-o'-lanterns, and settle in for a bone-chilling story about a place where real-life horrors once unfolded. Ghosts, unexplained noises, and tragic tales. Today, we're covering it all. But remember, the scariest part isn't the ghost stories. It's the truth behind them. So, turn down the lights and prepare yourself for a trip into Colorado's haunted history. Ridge Home, originally known as Colorado State Home and Training School, was established in 1912 to house children and adults with developmental disabilities, epilepsy, mental health issues, and other conditions. What started with good intentions quickly became a place of darkness. Very dark. We're talking whispers of abuse, neglect, and of course, unexplained deaths. But beyond the ghost stories, the real history of the Ridge Home is deeply disturbing. By the 1920s, Ridge Home was overcrowded and understaffed. At its peak, there were nearly 1,500 patients, ranging from infants to elderly. Most sent there because their families couldn't or wouldn't care for them. It wasn't uncommon for people with disabilities to be warehoused in these type of facilities, out of sight and out of mind from the public. And not just people with disabilities. Ridge Home also housed individuals who didn't fit into society's norms, like people with epilepsy, mental illnesses, or developmental delays. Some were sent there for reasons as simple as behavioral problems, And that's where the true horrors of Ridge Home come into play. So let's rewind a bit, Amanda. Before the paranormal investigators and ghost hunters came sniffing around, what made Ridge Home so notorious? Well, as the decades passed, the institution's conditions deteriorated. The patients were kept in large open dormitories with little privacy or dignity. Many were subjected to cruel treatment like physical restraints isolation, and punishments for uncontrollable behavior. In the 1940s and 50s, electroshock therapy and lobotomies became common practice to subdue patients. Let's not forget the rumors of unethical medical practices and experiments. Ridge Home was notorious for treating its patients as less than human, which opened the door for all kinds of abuses. The goal wasn't to rehabilitate these individuals. It was to control them. That's where the ghost stories come in. Many patients who died at Ridge Home were never claimed by their families. Some were buried in unmarked graves, their records mysteriously disappearing over the years. People say their spirits are trapped there, angry and confused, still seeking justice. There's one legend in particular that gives me the chills. The story of a young boy who was sent to Ridge Home in the 1960s. His family couldn't care for him, and like many others, he was forgotten. He died under mysterious circumstances, and ever since, people have reported seeing his spirit wandering the grounds, looking lost, and sometimes calling out for his mother. He's not the only one. Ridge Home had entire wards dedicated to children, many of them toddlers and infants who were separated from the adult population. They say you can still hear the cries of children late at night. Cold spots, ghostly figures, and shadowy figures in the windows are just some of the paranormal experiences reported over the years. So creepy. But what happened to Ridge Home after it closed? I mean, the place was operational for nearly 80 years. But by the 1980s, public opinion on these types of institutions was changing. Exactly. By the late 80s, Ridge Home was under intense scrutiny. Advocacy groups 
were pushing for deinstitutionalization, moving people with disabilities out of large, isolated facilities like Ridge Home and into smaller, community based care homes. The media exposed horrible conditions inside the asylum overcrowded, unsanitary, and rife with abuse. That led to its closure in 1991, correct? Yes. Ridge Home officially closed its doors in 1991. Patients were transferred to other facilities or released into community care programs. But the story doesn't end there. After it closed, Ridge Home was left abandoned and the site became a hot spot for urban explorers, thrill seekers, and of course, ghost hunters. There's one like that near my house, um, a closed psychiatric facility. They're trying to tear it down, but I don't know what's happening with it. It's very scary. But I've heard about that. The abandoned building set empty for years, and people reported all kinds of strange occurrences. Phantom footsteps, doors slamming on their own, and even disembodied voices. It became a legend in Colorado for anyone looking for a good scare. And for good reason. Even the most skeptical visitors couldn't deny the eerie feeling they got just being near the property. Some said the land itself felt cursed. In fact, there were reports of lights flickering inside the abandoned buildings, faces appearing in windows, and cold spots where the air felt heavy. But then, the buildings were demolished, right? Yes. In 2004, the state demolished what was left of Ridge Home. Most of the buildings were torn down to make way for new development. But despite the demolition, people still report strange experiences in the area. Oh, yeah, that's right. Instead of an asylum, it's the site of a bustling shopping center. The grounds of Ridge Home are now home to a Target, a Starbucks, and other retail stores. People drive by or shop there without realizing the dark history that lies beneath. Yeah, they built right on top of where Ridge Home once stood, but that hasn't stopped the stories. Some employees of those stores have reported hearing strange noises after hours, footsteps, faint whispers, and objects moving on their own. Even though the asylum is gone, it's like the energy of the place never left. It's wild to think about. You could be shopping for home decor at Target, which is Amanda's favorite place to shop, completely unaware that the very ground you're standing on was once the site of so much suffering. (laughs) Exactly. And I will not be shopping at that Target, even though I do love Target. (laughs) But whether or not you believe in ghosts, the land still holds the memory of Ridge Home, a place where thousands of people were forgotten, mistreated, and even died. Maybe that's why the spirits haven't moved on. So, what do you think, Corey? Does Ridge Home Asylum still hold the spirits of those who suffered there? Or is it just a spooky story we tell ourselves to explain the unexplainable? I believe in ghosts. So, I would 100% spend the night there. Because I would, I would, I would dig it. It would be cool. I know you wouldn't stay there, but I would. Yeah, you'd be alone. Or with other crazy people, Mm -hmm. but not with me. No. In my sleeping bag. (laughs) Too old for a sleeping bag. (laughs) And probably a mattress because I'm old. (laughs) It's fair. You can't sleep on the ground. (laughs) No. No way. Well, whether you believe in ghosts or not, Ridge Home's story serves as a haunting reminder of how people with disabilities were mistreated for far too long. Our hearts go out to those who suffered there, both in life and beyond. The land may have changed, but the impact of what happened at Ridge Home can't be forgotten. Exactly. We're here to tell these stories, not to just give you the chills, (laughs) but to shed light on the real human experiences behind them. If this episode resonated with you, or if you're fascinated by Colorado's darker history, be sure to subscribe to Colorado Crime Podcast on your favorite platform. And don't forget to leave us a review. Share the episode with your friends and join us next week for more true crime stories from the Centennial State. Thanks for listening and happy haunting. All right, spooky podcastians, have the day you deserve.